I am interested in why people believe one thing rather than another. You know, especially in America where it's a smorgasbord of beliefs and you can believe anything you want. What draws people into, for instance, Scientology, a highly stigmatized and exotic religion? And if you can understand those things, you can understand that process, you can understand a lot about motivation for other religious movements or political ones. Larry was writing his, uh, his book on Scientology, he sent me the galleys. I was, I was riveted by the story and I thought I could bring something to it in terms of g giving people a visceral sense of what it might be like to be inside. One of the things that interested me was figuring out how people get in and so I focused a lot on auditing which is this process of, of therapy that, that you engage in in Scientology where you're hooked up to this e-meter and people ask you questions but it's really a kind of, it's like Freud's talking cure. And that, I think, was kind of the hook for this sort of bait and switch in, in Scientology. As you go up these levels and pay increasing amounts of money, uh, suddenly there's a different kind of hold the, the religion has on you. But early on, that, that auditing was a powerful motivator for people because a lot of the people I talked to admitted how really good they felt. People read about Scientology with a sneer on their face. That right. could never happen to me. I think the evidence in the book and in, now in the film is that you know, very caring, intelligent, discerning, and skeptical people are drawn into a, an organization that uh, can really transform their lives, not always for the good. Paul Haggis is a good example of yeah. that. He's yeah. an award-winning director. He's a likable person. Yeah. Through the movie, we see him telling you that the, all the way through, and then in the end, when it starts getting into aliens and volcanoes, and <laughs> yeah, then he goes, crazy. "What the yeah. fuck is this?" You know, yeah. and it's and it's like, and he's but he still kept going with it. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've invested that much time and money and emotion into something, it's very hard for you to to look at what you've done and say, you know, I was wrong. The church is very good at helping them do that. You know, put aside all the criticism. But once Paul began to unravel some of the stories and, and to dig further, he realized, oh my God, you know, the terrible stuff going on. And, and actually, I'm not only a part of it, because I'm a, a prominent filmmaker, I'm helping to promote it. And so his belief system unraveled very quickly. Right, and he'd given hundreds of thousands of dollars right. to it. And his wife his, his, was in it, his, his sister, his, his, his children were in Scientology schools. His whole community, in some ways, even though he's a very prominent celebrity in Hollywood, it was built around that affiliation. The doors had bars put on them, the windows all had bars put on them, and there was one entrance door that a security guard sat at 24 hours a day. They had to stay there, sleep there. It stunk, and you know, there were ants crawling around. Did you sleep about an hour, two hours a night? Um, you were in such a mental state that you're very controllable, very suggestible. One woman in the film who was, who was the key, uh, she was sort of John Travolta's key handler in terms of the church, and uh, she got punished and, and put in a thing, a sort of a prison camp called the Rehabilitation Project Force. And her child was taken from her and put in a, a kind of a nursery for, for young kids. They take them away from you. She decided to check her out and realized there were fruit flies on her body. Her, her, she was terribly sick. Nobody had changed her diaper in days. Her, her eyes had been encrusted with mucus so she could barely open them. She freaked out and she actually rescued her child and made an escape. John Travolta knew what was happening to her and, and he chastised her for letting it happen but he did nothing to help her. And he did nothing to speak out against those kinds of abuses in the church. People like Tom Cruise and John Travolta have an affirmative responsibility to speak out about these abuses and when they don't, they're endorsing them. I want to know more about the breakup of Tom Cruise's Nicole Kidman's marriage that you touch on in the movie. We have very powerful testimony from Marty Rathbun, who was pretty much the number two person in the church, who was charged really with the responsibility of trying to break up their marriage because the church felt that Nicole was pulling Tom away from the church. And Nicole's father was a very prominent psychiatrist? Or psychologist. Psychologist in, in Australia. And psychology is like Satan to Scientologists. Uh, so they were very concerned and they worked at it in a number of ways according to Marty. Uh, one of the ways was to use church officials to try to turn their children against Nicole 
and to make them believe that she was called a suppressive person. And Marty Rathbun also refers to the fact that Tom Cruise at one point asked him to wiretap Nicole Kidman. So there were a lot of things they were doing, and it was, a, it was kind of a brutal process. If you think about what kind of church gets involved in the relationships of human beings and tries to destroy them. <laughs> <laughs>